first and foremost, I want to give all honours and praises and glory belongs to my Lord and Saviour, whose name is Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Wahavakakwadash. The name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh, and his son's name is Yahweh Shai, who we reverence and double honours to the elder apostles of Great Millstone and to the hopeful elect across the globe and to the few, the very few brothers and sisters that are listening and that are also learning across the globe. This lesson is going to be based on the faith and the confidence, that key word, confidence that we need to have in Yahabashai. Once you have confidence in Yahabashai, Yahabashai has confidence in you. You have confidence in yourself. Why? Because you know Yahabashai is dealing with you in, in humility. And this lesson is going to be called Insecurities Lead to Projections. Confidence leads to what? Reflection. And once you can, when you're confident, you're able to what? Reflect on oneself. You're able to reflect on yourself and you're able to grow. And by that, what you're, you're gaining that confidence. People that are insecure, they never grow. They're too worried about what this person, what that person think. Ah, oh, they're going to accept me. When you're confident, you don't care about what the world thinks. Does this mean you don't have an air to what people think? No, when you're confident, you're actually your biggest critic. Confident people, they're the biggest, big, biggest critics. They can curse themselves out. They can ridicule themselves. People that are not, people that are insecure, they can't take correction. They project. So we're going to get to the scripture and Lord willing, I hope this is edifying. Let's start off in Ecclesiastes 14. Baba Kasha, Baba Kasha, Baba Kasha. You know what? 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 Let's start at. You know, yeah, we're going to start at Ecclesiastes 14. Ecclesiastes. to himself so the scriptures are they're straight to the point the scriptures he that is evil to himself who, who will he be good so if you're if you're evil to yourself what is that who you gonna who, who can you do good to if you're evil to yourself that's a sign of you don't love yourself and I'm not talking about in terms of loving yourself as in being pompous being proud no I'm talking about having a care for yourself looking after yourself because that's going to be shown your faith in your house is going to be shown how you carry yourself how you feel about yourself a lot of the time that's it comes out outwardly how you feel about yourself a lot of the time that comes out what in your actions He shall not take pleasure in his goods. There is none worse than him that envieth himself. The scriptures are telling you there's nothing, there's nothing worse than a man that envies himself. Because if you're in that mind state, you can't do good to nobody else. You can't teach nobody else if you envy yourself. That's why it all starts with it all starts with us. I always say this: the biggest enemy is ourselves. Okay. And this is the recompense of his own wickedness. So the scriptures are telling you why. Why would you envy yourself? It's the recompense of your own wickedness. Yes, there's a saying, you reap what you sow. If you go around doing evil wickedness, of course you're going to feel like shit. You're going to feel condemned because that's what you're putting out there. So whatever you put out there, of course it's going to come back to you. Okay. That's why you've got to have a good mind towards your Havashai 
and a good mind towards the body as well because if you have a good mind towards your have a shy you're gonna have a good mind towards the body that's gonna go without saying because you have a good mind towards your have a shy and that's where it begins all right go straight to verse seven and if he do with good he do it for unwillingly and you can explain that to push in the work if he do it good he do it for unwillingly you should want to push the truth you should want to push this word it shouldn't be unwillingly you should have what a willing mind to push these videos out there to get this word spreading you should have a willing mind to do that so scripture are telling you the mindset of something that is not really sincere and if he do it he do it for unwillingly and it, at the last he would declare his wickedness so if you're not sincere about something at the last at the end it's going to be known, it's going to be declared that you were never really about the truth. The wickedness is going to be declared. Your unsincerity is going to be declared, it's going to be known. Oh, this guy, he wasn't really about the truth, he was about his own belly. He was about some fame, he was about some uh, ulterior motive. He was about his own agenda. All these things are going to be shown. We envious man have a wicked eye. Okay, so why would an envious man have a wicked eye? Because he has low self-esteem. He does not have he does not have confidence. People that are envious, they lack confidence. They need somebody else to tell them, yeah, you're doing a good job. Okay. And that's the beautiful thing about not getting a lot of views. That's what that's what's so beautiful. I'm still moved to do this work, regardless of the views, regardless of who, who's watching, because I know Yahabasha is watching. That's the one you should be concerned with. The envious man have a wicked eye. And I have two things. I in mind. Okay. And I, which is physical eye. And it all starts with your mind first. Why does the envious man have a wicked eye? Because this envious man has not worked on himself. He, he has not worked on what he's been given. So that's how you have a wicked eye. You know what envy leads to? Every single uh, sin underneath the sun. Every single sin. That's why envy is su such a dangerous thing because it leads to every other sin. There's no telling what you would do if you're envious of someone. You'd commit adultery, you would murder them, you would steal, you'd do all them things. You would lie, you would deceive. And turn away his face and despise of men. This is not women. Women do that. Women act like that. Okay. Turn away his face. Why does he turn away his face? Because he doesn't want you to notice that you're envious of him. These are bad traits, niggardly traits, worldly traits. A wicked eye, baby, just a covetous man's eye is not satisfied. So what is what does covetous mean? You wanting what belongs to somebody else, what somebody else has, whether it be spiritual, whether it be physical. And it says it's not satisfied. So here it is, the Lord's given you what you need for this truth. But you want what this other man's got. You're looking at his plate. Oh, he's got extra uh, vegetables. He's got an extra pizza without pepperoni. Because we don't eat pork. Okay. And you, you envious at that. That's a bad mind. That's called being bad minded. A wicked man have a covetous eye and it says a wicked man. So if you're in that spirit of being covetousness and you don't snap out of that spirit, guess what that means? That means you're a wicked man. And to prove another way. And an iniquity of the wicked drieth up his soul. Okay, because that's really uh, um, Esau, that's really his trait. That's how Esau rolled. But tell which they in my good doing too. They COVID fields, they take fields that don't belong to them. And these are trillionaires. So why would a trillionaire need to take more and more and more when they got enough? Because they're not satisfied. They're greedy. Okay. Too damn greedy, man. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Too damn greedy. That's why you want to be content. Alright? We want to be content. Pray, pray you never get that spirit as well. 
And that's one beautiful thing about this truth. Since I've been in this truth, I've never ever ever envied a brother or coveted what another man has. Because I was always focusing on myself. And when I say that, I'm not talking in the terms of being selfish. I mean, always focus on yourself where you can grow. Okay? We gonna get to it, we gonna get to it. So now let's go to, got a few things written down. Whew. Now let's go to the talents. Okay? And there's another thing I wanna go into as well. You know, before we go into the talents, let's quickly go to this. Let me just, you know what, let's go into the talents, let's go into the talents. Let's go. Let's go. And that's why this, this um, particular scripture is so heavy. Let's go to Matthew 25 and 14. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man travelling into a far country. And that man who's travelling into that far country, let's see how was shy. He's in the spiritual realm. Remember what Yahweh Shai told his disciples? I go to my father. Where I am, you cannot come right now. Paraphrasing. Okay. So again. And went into a far country. Hear me just a minute. Who called his own servants. Because guess what? We are servants for Yahweh Shai. We are ministers for Yahweh Shai. We are here to serve for Yahweh Shai. Called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. So what's the goods? The word, the truth, the knowledge, the wisdom, the knowledge. That's the goods that we've been given. And the goods are not for ourselves. It's to what? To minister, which is going to go into. And unto one he gave five talents. And when you go into that word talents, I forgot what it's called. Is it? I th yeah, I think tal talentios. Tian talentios. Okay, talentios in the Greek. And talentios is weight, worth, measure. So you have a weight, you have a worth, you have a measure. Okay, that was measured to you. Okay. So every and weight, weight. When you're measuring something, it's what it's talent, weight. Just like with gold, you do with gold. When people are buying gold, they want they always want to know the weight. They measure it up. Okay, how much grams? Okay, so you call you've been calling this truth. Yahabashai has given you a talent. There's such thing as a God given talent. Well Yahabashai has given you that. Okay. And gave one five talents. And another two talents. Okay, so one had five, one had two. Okay. And another, bear me just a minute. And another one. To every man according to his several ability. What he could do, what he was capable of. Because Yahabashai knows what we're capable of. That's why another thing, you cannot fool Yahabashai. He knows what you're capable of. And he knows what you're not capable of. Okay? Every man has a several ability, because everybody has ability, and straightway took his journey. So he left. When he had received the five, then he had that received the five talents, went and traded. So he traded. He right. traded what he had. Alright there? Yeah. He traded what he had. So when we've been given these talents, we need to trade it. Because then it wouldn't be a talent, then it wouldn't be of no worth. So something that's of worth, you would need to trade it. I'm listening. Just like with gold. I'm sure you do trading, I'm sure some of you deal with trading. So when you're trading, what are you trading? Talents. So it's the same with this truth, this wisdom. We have to trade it. Freely received, freely give. And where was I? And likewise, he that I received two, I'm moving too fast. When he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. Okay? So he that had five talents, he made another five. So he made ten. Okay? So he made a profit. So this knowledge we've been given, the dog don't want to leave me. Okay? 
so so maybe <laughs> even 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 a, even a dog wants to hear what I've got to say. So yeah, you had five talents. He made what another five? That's ten. So Lord, He wants to see what you're doing with His money. Okay, He wants to know what you done with His money. Are you flipping it? Even in business, if someone gives you a money, example, if someone gives you twenty thousand, we're gonna get into it. We're gonna get into it. It's like you. Maybe just a minute. it. Even a dog wants to hear what I gotta say. Okay, we're gonna get into it. Matthew twenty-five. And bear with me. Where is it? Sixteen. No, seventeen, seventeen, seventeen. And now it was he that received two, he also gained two. So even an individual that had two. Yeah, he gained two. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it was just two. But he gained another two, so that was four. He multiplied. Okay. And why did he multiply? Because he used what was given to him. There's a saying in the state. You have lemon. Well, you, you, out of that lemon, you learn to make lemonade. Okay. Out of that lemon. You work with what, what you've been given. You understand, well, understand what I'm saying? That's, that's what Yahweh wants to do. What he's given you, he wants you to work with it. Let's go to verse 17. 18. But he that have received one went and digged in the earth. Okay. So you're digging in the earth. You're trying to get rid of something. You don't want no part of it. So this is lacking to men that have this truth. But the truth ain't enough for them, so they wanna, they wanna dig it. They, they, they think nothing of it. That's called not being appreciative. All right, and it tells you. And digged in the earth and hid his lord's money. So you have individuals they have this truth, but they don't think of it. They don't think nothing of it. So they don't do, they don't do nothing with it. So the, you're never given a chance to grow. You don't grow. Because you had the truth, but you never done anything with it. All these years were what? To build, to build up. To increase you. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And who's the Lord of those servants? Yahweh Shai. Okay. And he sends his angels to, to watch what every man's doing. Okay. And reckon if what check them. Okay. And so he that received the five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I've gained beside them five talents more. And he done that with cheerfulness. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Because he was doing what he was supposed to be doing. And you know what it says faithful servant as well. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. Okay, not much a few. Right now it's a test. I will make thee ruler over many things. Alright. Enter into the joy of the Lord, Yahweh Abashai. Enter into the kingdom. And the scriptures say, not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom, because they weren't doing, they never stayed, they never stayed, they never stood stiff for the truth. They wanted to do their own thing. They wanted to push the word the way, the way they wanted to push the word. No, there's a way. Okay? There's a way. See what else we got. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. And he that received the one. Let me just say, I'm moving too fast. And he that also received the two talents came and said, Lord, I have delivered unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two talents beside them. Four. Okay, he's Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord, the kingdom. Okay. When he that have received the one talent came and said, 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay calm with this. Okay, when I read this, of course it gets you mad because it's the severity of it. It was a talent. He was given a talent. It's just that he thought nothing of the talent. He didn't think nothing of it. In other words, he thought nothing of the truth. Okay. He that received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew that art a hard man, reaping when that has not sown, and gathering when that has not straw. So if you know someone's a hard man, you see, even on these some of these films, the mafia, you're not gonna mess with their money. You're not gonna mess with their money. You're, you're gonna be, you're gonna be, what's the point? You're gonna be on point. You're gonna be doing what's required. Why? Because you fear you have a shy. So if you fear someone, you're gonna do what they say. Okay? You're gonna do what they say. Okay? You're not gonna make excuses why you, conf why you cannot fulfill your duty as a man of the Lord. You're gonna do what, what's required. Why? Because it's our duty. You understand what I'm saying? It's our duty. Nothing less, nothing more. Oh boy, bear me just a minute. Got these flying ants everywhere. Bear me just a minute. Let's see what we can get. I was afraid. And when I hid that talent in the earth, lo, there, that is thine. Excuse. Oh, that so-called afraid. Well, yeah, that's that's good. You well, you should have been afraid. That was the whole point. Through the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. But he said he was afraid. Wait me just a minute. He was afraid, but you never done anything with it. You never done anything with what you were given. So that fear was supposed to move you to use the talents, to use his wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. that money to flip that talent there that is that is thine I hid that talent in the earth no there that is thine. when he gave it back that would make any anybody mad anybody especially in business that make anybody mad Whatever it is a business you're giving someone the means of what to, to, to make money and this guy just just hides it that's madness his Lord answered and said, All right, and to him, the wicked and slothful servants. And guess what that makes you? A wicked and slothful servant. Bear me just a minute. Sure, all these flying ants just appear out of nowhere. The wicked and slothful servant. So that's what it makes you. It makes you wicked and it makes you a slothful servant. And you go into that word slothful, it goes into what? Remiss. It goes into Remiah. So you're doing that. If you're a slothful servant, you're wicked, you're, you're, you're doing this work in remiss, and you're doing this work deceitfully. That's what the scriptures say. Thou altars, therefore, as I put my money to the exchangers. You are better giving it up to the exchangers, someone that can actually do the work. My coming, I should have received my own with usury. So you could, you could, he could have got his money back on it. Okay, bear me just a minute. Where are these ants coming from? Okay. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him that have what ten talents. So now, guess what? That talent's going to be taken from you, and it's going to be given to someone that actually what? Has them talents. And an individual that has them talents, he's going to be able to use it. Someone actually can, is fit for the job. For the duty. For everyone that have shall be given, which is what the truth. And she shall have abundance. But from him that have not shall be taken away, 
even that which you have. So if you don't use the talent you've been given, guess what? It's going to be taken away. That's why you're supposed to use it. All right? And cast you the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. So guess what? You're going to be cast out into the abyss because you were not using what you were given. Okay? That's why it's so important to do the work of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh And men that get an attitude and say, well, it doesn't it doesn't really matter and this and that well you're just going to see what happens to them eventually <laughs> you understand what i'm saying they shall be reaping and gnashing of teeth now and this is what happens that's why certain men have been given a bigger portion and guess what i've even realized this you can't make this up a little little testimony you labored with someone they fall out and you might have not had as much talents. You had talents, but not, might have not, not had as much. But as soon as that guy leaves, goes back into the world, you have them talents that he had. You know what I'm saying? You have because the Lord gives you that. So remember this man's spirit. Remember once you go back into the world, once you stop pushing this truth, once you stop believing, Yahushua strips you of your spirit, and that righteous spirit that you once had gets taken off of you, and it gets it gets given to another man, an extra portion, just like what's it? Was it Elisha and Elijah? Which Elisha prayed for what? A double portion of the spirit. So even that's what happens in the truth as well. Men get an extra portion. I think that's beautiful. Okay. Those that are really sincere about the truth, they get an extra portion of the spirit. Okay. So now we went into that. This is why it's about what? Working on yourself. Now let's grab... Not this comparison, uh, uh, trying to compare yourself to another man. Okay, because that's not going to work. Let's go to Ecclesiasticus chapter 11 and 22. The blessing of the Lord is in the reward of the godly. Okay. And suddenly he maketh blessing to flourish. What's your blessing? By your talent. That's the blessing. This truth, this wisdom, this knowledge, understanding. The Lord Yahushua is able to make that flourish. What does flourish mean? Increase. And a blessing is an increase. It's, it's, it's increasing. Okay. Which is your talent. Say not what profit is there of my service. Don't be in that spirit. That's an ungrateful mind. Oh, what, 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 what profit is there of my service? What, what profit is this going to do to me? See, people of the world are thinking like this. If you're a man of the world, you're going to be thinking like this. Okay? What profit is there of me doing this? And you know, keyword, profit. Because someone that's worldly, he's always thinking about profit. Someone that's worldly is going to look at this truth like, oh, well, I could be making money. That the niggas of the world say, yeah, get money. Get money. Oh, well, guess what? The economy's going to crash. And the true money is what this word. But a worldly individual is going to be thinking like that. What profit is this, this truth to me? Because he, he's carnal. He doesn't see the long run. You're only looking at the short run. That means you don't have any vision. To keep it enduring, you have to look at the long run. That's what it means to have vision. Your work, your labour is going to pay off. If you endure. If we endure. Again. Bear with just a minute. Say that what profit is there of my service and what good thing shall I have thereafter? So you don't want to be in an ungrateful spirit. The profit you're going to have, look, bro, it's the kingdom. And even on this side, you know how many miracles are going to be done by certain brothers? Healing, certain miracles. Bro, look, there's going to be particular things that, are, that we're going to witness. Particular things we're going to witness. That you never believe. Well, I don't want to say that you never believe. That we do believe, because it, again, it takes belief. But there's going to be particular things that you may never thought that would happen in your lifetime. Have faith. Bear me just a minute. Okay. Don't be focused on what what another man's doing. Okay. Bear me just a minute. Well, look at what this man's doing. How could that that comparison demon? Which is, it all ties back to envy. You understand what I'm saying? Which is really the ways of Esau. 
Okay. Bear me just a minute, Babakusha. Every man's been given a gift of talent. You've got some brothers that are more eloquent speakers, you've got some brothers that are less eloquent speakers. Okay. You've got some brothers that can give you more advice on women, you've got some brothers that can't give you as much advice on women. The balance. You got brothers that can um, give you more advice on. I don't know, different things, different, a whole different things, a range of things. Eat, diet. Another brother may not be able to give you that same advice on diet. Different things, different experiences for different brothers. Okay. Would you bear me just a minute? I'm just trying to get this scripture. I'm looking for see if I can find it. Okay, got that. I'm gonna grab Timothy's. Because what does it go back to this low self-esteem? Women have that. Women have that low self-esteem. They project their insecurities on others. Okay. When you wake up to this truth, you're not supposed to have that. This truth is supposed to make you somewhat confident in your shine. Remember, remember, not in ourselves. In Yahweh Shai. Because a man may say, no, you, you, you're too confident, you're too confident. No, 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 no. It's just that you're too incompetent and you're not confident. That's what the problem is. It doesn't want you to be confident. It doesn't want you to be the opposite. Bear me just a minute. I was looking for a particular scripture. In Proverbs, one thing at a time, bear me just a minute, we will get it. Some heavy scriptures in Proverbs, man. Ah, man, I can't find it. Where it talks about where it's, um, the fear, the fear of the, with the fear of the Lord, with the fear of the Lord is strong confidence. So strong confidence comes with fearing the Lord. So why has a man, why does he have strong confidence? He has strong confidence because he fears Yahweh Shai. That's where it comes from. So if you're wondering, why does a man have strong confidence? Because he fears Yahweh Shai. Because when you don't have that fear of Yahweh Shai, you're going to start losing that confidence. You're going to start what, doubting. But guess what? Satan's going to work upon that doubt. So how do you fight doubt? Through the scriptures, through faith. That's how you fight doubt. Okay? Continually. So bear me just a minute. Let's go. We're gonna get grab Timothy. Five and thirteen. Never been one, I've never been one in this truth to be nosy when it comes to this truth. Got so much work to do. You you look out for brothers and all that, but look, it starts with us first. We gotta make sure we're right. First Timothy 5 and 13. We've got issues of ourselves. Okay, let's go to first Timothy 5. Is it that always happens? Wrong one written down. First Timothy's five. It's First Timothy's five and thirteen. I do that a lot. And this is really referring to women, but you can also refer this to men. And it says here. And with all they learn, this is First Timothy's five and thirteen. With all they learn to be idle. Idols when you're not doing anything. So if you're idle, you're definitely ain't doing the work of the Lord. You're how I was shy. Idle, which goes into slothful, wandering about from house to house. And you can also refer that from camp to camp. You could be a man that refer, was wandering from camp to camp, okay? Or from person to person, because you may have a big camp and you may be um, teaming up with different brothers, okay? Like this is a clique, okay? Wandering about from house to house, because the house is also what? A camp. And not only idle, but tattlers. Tattlers is a gossiper. That's a female trait, you're gossiping. Also, and, and busybodies, okay, 
the word for busybody is what? When you go into the blue letters, it talks about busy about folks, affairs, or things impertinent, superfluous, meddlesome in other men's matters. And you have guys like that in the truth. They're meddling in other men's matters that they don't even know about. The only time they can do a video is when it's concerning some um, so-called event, some squabbling, or some so-called contention, or problem between other individuals. Are you that guy? Because if you are, guess what? Yahabashai does not like that. Okay, he doesn't like that at all. Being a damn busybody. Bear me just a minute. He hates that. Speaking things what they ought not. Why does it say speaking things that they ought not? Because you're in another man's matters. So you're speaking things you ought not to be speaking. Okay? Especially if you don't know what's going on. Within another camp, within, 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 with other brothers. You don't know. You don't know. That's why you got to focus on yourself. Okay? And that's a, that's a woman's trait. You see women in the office buildings doing that, gossiping. They claim to be best friends. But they be speaking against each other. You see that all the time, all the bloody time with these women. And you've got a lot of men that act like women. Look, you just got to be real about this truth. It's got to be real. Okay? You have to be real about this thing. Bear me just a minute. So we're done with that. Now let's go to Corinthians. Baba Kishar, Baba Kishar. After some time, it's, yeah, it can become frustrating. Like, what's your problem? Focus on yourself. You, you f f face will pull up on the screen. You, you, you be busybody and shit. Worrying about what other men, worry about yourself. Scriptures talk about a, a mischievous man. A mischievous man's going to be up in everybody else's business. Scheming, plotting. Looking wicked as hell on camera. Wicked as hell. Some dark ass eyes. So I've got to say it like that. This is 2 Corinthians 11 and 12. For we dare not to make ourselves of the number. Okay? That's why we say hopeful elect. We're not daring ourselves to be of that number. Okay? We say Lord willing. We say hopeful elect. Or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. So you don't want to be comparing yourself with those that commend themselves. You don't want to be doing that. Oh, but I did this, I did this. He does this better. He's a better speaker. He's a better this. How comes he can't do this? Because there's 12 tribes. Get out of that spirit, man. It's, it, that's frustrating. And guess what? That's causing contention. It's causing contention. Well, how comes he can't do this? Well, how comes he can do this? There's 12 tribes. There's a body. Of men. That do things slightly differently. But it's all for the body. It's all for the same thing. It's all for the same purpose. Why are you worried about what, the, what this man's good at? What, what his talent is? What about your talent? Have you worked on your talent? Are you just criticising other men? That spirit is irritating. There's some that commend themselves and that what commend is for praise. You ain't supposed to be praising yourself. Because if you're praising yourself, maybe you didn't do a good job. That's what commend means praise. And you know the Pharisees were doing that. They were commending themselves. So we don't commend ourselves. We, you let another man do that. Those that commend themselves. But they then measuring themselves by themselves. So you've got men that measure themselves. That popularity contest spirit. The instant gratification spirit. Oh yeah, I'm gonna do it. I can, I, I can do it way better than him. 
But then you tried it and it's like, no, it doesn't quite work because that was not your talent. That's what not Yahweh did not give you that. He didn't he did not give you that talent. That's why you gotta know where you fit in, what you're good at. And even the things that you're not so good at, but the things that you're good at, you work on. And even so, the things that you're not so much good at, you work on even more. When I see how you have shy increases you, then you you end up having your own little unique spirit about you. You understand what I'm saying? That makes you stand out. Which we don't seek to stand out in this world, but it makes you stand out. That makes you, that's what makes you you in the truth. Okay? You can only be you, you can't be another man. You can only be you. You've got a lot of men that do that, emulate. Scriptures tell you that in Galatians as well. Emulation, those that emulate, you copying another man. You've got to be who you have a show set you up to be. And comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. That's how a lot of fights break out. And what's that? Ego. Okay. <laughs> That's ego. That's ego tripping. When you know you have something and you're blessed with something, you don't need to prove your point. If you're not in, if, if you're not insecure, if you're confident, you don't need to prove anything to anybody. When you're insecure, you have to pr 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 prove a point. Are not wise. So if you're doing that, guess what? You're not wise. But we will not boast of things without our measure, but according to the measure of the rule which the Most High distributed to us. A measure to reach even unto you. Okay? Every man has a measure which Yahweh has given them. But we stretch not ourselves beyond our measure. So you're trying to do what another man's been blessed with and you can't do it. That's you stretching yourself beyond your measure. So you've got to know your limits, what you can do. And if there's a measure, that means yes, there's a limit or a limitation on what you can do, what you're good at, what what you can excel at. have distributed to us a measure to reach even unto you okay for we stretch not ourselves beyond our measure as though we have reached not unto you for we are come as far as unto you as preaching the gospel of Mashiach this when you have a shot um, Paul was what traveling okay sometimes it would take him a long time sometimes he'd be stranded on these travels okay so this what it sh what, 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 what what's the, what's the whole premise of this lesson work on yourself Okay, and not to be incompetent, being insecure. When you work on yourself, when you when you strive for the truth, well, that's what Yahushua does. He builds his spirit up. Okay, so with this lesson, I hope this was edifying. And until the next time, shout out to the hopeful elect. Shout out.